Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with a tutorial. Um, today we're going to be making a necklace and I am going to be using a pendant that my friend Janie sent me and it was very special to her because it came from her mother's stash um, and I promised her I wouldn't hoard it too much. <laughs> so I finally came up with something that I wanted to do with it and uh, that I think will really um, accentuate this wonderful bead. Um, it's a pendant, but also a bead. So it's not drilled other than the eye. So that's where we're going to start. Um, I am thinking I want to end with a lariat today, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I've gotten out many different forms of beads today. I got out some really pretty pearls, um, some bone beads, gorgeous. Um, some chevron beads and I've also gotten out some um, rose quartz so here's some faceted rose quartz and some six millimeter rose quartz rounds and I also got out some chips so uh, we're gonna start there I know there's going to be some metal we're gonna start out uh, just a little we're gonna design it first and then see where we end up Okay, I have some 19 strand jewelry wire from Vitalon. Um, and I think this is gonna be very interesting. I'm trying to decide. I don't think I wanna use a jump ring to attach the bead to the necklace. Um, I think we're going to use wire and we're going to, to bead it on. So it we're going to, I'm going to have to find some seed beads to do that. I think that's what we're going to do. Yep, that's what we're going to do. I'll be right back. Okay, while I got the seed beads that were in a matching color, I also grabbed some um, bead caps in two different shapes and sizes. I uh, also got some daisy spacers, some little cylindrical spacers, and some shell metal beads. I don't know that I'll use all of those, but I would love to try. <laughs> um, I am going to, before I move on to the ends of the necklace, I'm going to set those apart or aside and I am going to bead the actual necklace itself. So this is going to be one strand, um, a one strand necklace and it's going to connect in the front, not the back. Um, let me find my nippers so I can just open this strand. And today I'm not going to use a bead board. I thought about it, but I'm just gonna use this bead mat. Um, I'm not really thinking I'm going to lay out a pattern. Actually, I do want a pattern. I just don't know that a beadboard would be that much better than this today. Um, I'm trying to move my light a little bit to make it a little bit better. Okay, so I have all of my beads. I'm going to start with um, my focals like I always do, and I'm just going to make a, uh, an easy pattern. Um, and then we can always change it up in the middle if, if it's something that we don't like. So I'll cut open my bone beads. I love mixing different colors and patterns. I think you guys have noticed that by now, but this is, um, I don't know where we're going with this. I think um, that obviously the dominant color in this necklace is going to be pink. These are just gonna be accent colors. They're not, it's, it, right now it looks a little clashy, but I really wanted that mint with the pink. And I think the um, nice maroon on these beads will help even that pink out. Um, and I got these beads from Beads Inc. The, the chevron beads came from beads ink. Um, used to be Christine White style, but it's beads ink now. So I'll just put a few of those out. I don't need the whole strand. And then um, the bone beads came from eBay, if you're, if you're wondering. I'm going to set aside some of these other things for now, just until we need them. I also got out two crimp beads and two crimp covers. We'll set those aside for now. Okay. I have my wire 
and I'm thinking, what will I want to lead up to my bead? I'm going to put some seed beads on the end at some point, but what do I want leading up to the seed beads? Um, I think I always like starting off with a nice finished look. And since this uh, crimp cover will be up against the seed beads, we're gonna start off then with a, a daisy spacer. and a nice uh, rose quartz bead. Um, I do want to, oh, the bead caps I got out were a little big. I don't think these, I think these are probably for eight millimeter beads and I think they're just gonna be a little big. Today we'll just use spacers instead. We'll, we won't worry about bead caps. Um, and then I will go into a little bit of a pattern here. Okay, and I'll start, I'll put in one chevron bead. I don't really wanna do a daisy spacer every other bead because it'll just end up wasting all my daisy spacers, but I do want to, when I separate, when I move on to a different bead, I will be doing a daisy spacer. So there I went from the chevron to the pink, and I'm going to do maybe three pinks. It's time for me to cut my nails. <laughs> okay. Working with rose quartz, I always get so calm. I feel really calm working with these beads. I don't know what it is, but I love it. Okay, so then I'll do another daisy spacer, and then we're going to do a bone bead and another daisy spacer. Yeah, this is gonna be super duper cute. I can already picture it. And that's, what, that's our, that's our um, pattern. And I'm just going to bead this for as long as I want it. I think the necklace I'm looking for is gonna be about 22 inches long. So there is our pattern, easy but it's going to be a different type of, of necklace. I'm gonna speed up the beading because that, that part's boring. <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't wanna hear me talking while I'm beading a whole necklace, and I'll be right back. I almost forgot, I really wanna throw in some of these shell beads, so I'm going to do that. I, um, so I did a green bead, a bone bead, a green bead, and then of course pink in the middle. And then I think we'll go with one shell bead and then we'll go green bead, bone bead, green bead, shell bead. So I think that's what we're gonna do. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I've gotten um, my necklace beaded and I've left uh, a few available uh, rose quartz beads so we can make one half of the clasp, um, which will just be a ring that we can slide our beautiful fish through, okay? So this part, this end is still on the cord so I don't have to worry about that. You wanna put a bead stopper on here if you're gonna be walking away from your project. I speak from experience because I've dropped uh, an entire necklace on the floor and just just about cried. <laughs> Not this one, thankfully. So um, right here, I'm going to scoot a uh, bead, uh, crimp bead on, and I'm just gonna let him slide down, and we're gonna figure these there for just a moment. And um, then I'm going to continue my pattern. So I'm going to put on another spacer, um, and then our uh, another rose quartz bead. And then I totally forgot that I really wanted to use pearls on this, but that's okay. We can use those sometime in the future. Um, and actually I'm going to use some of the smaller rose quartz that are in this little mix that I got from a haul last summer. 
I'm just gonna spill these out and grab the teeny ones. Oh, some stragglers in the bag here. Okay. And then I'm just going to string on as many as I think we'll ne I'll need to make a big enough circle for our fish. These are really cute. These are actually little faceted ones. I was going to do um, seed beads. I am going to do seed beads on the other side, but I was going to do seed beads on this side, but it just didn't seem right to me. So I think it's gonna be a lot cuter with the uh, rose quartz beads. So we'll just keep going. Okay, so I have um, enough beads, I think, to be able to scooch our little um, fish through the loop. Oh yeah, actually I'm going to take one off and I'm going to put on um, a seed bead there because as we've noticed before in some of the necklaces or double strand bracelets that I've made, um, we need a little buffer between um, this bead and this bead when we go back through um, this the end bead and the bead right next to the six millimeter bead when we go back through so we're gonna take our wire go back through the six millimeter bead and if one bead uh, one seed bead isn't enough that's totally fine we can use some more no one seed beads going to be fine and bef I'm going to check again to make sure that loops okay to scooch yeah he's big enough so <laughs> check twice cut once so we're gonna go ahead and put the wire back through a couple beads and of course through our um, crimp bead oh. and if you need to do it one bead at a time that's totally fine sometimes they're a little stubborn sometimes your fingernails get in the way <laughs> okay so that's what our little um, loop looks like I love it I love it so much okay and then we're gonna try and get in this bead right here I'm just gonna move down my beads so I can do it more easily okay go back through our crimp bead move that guy down oh goodness There we go, finally. And then we'll just move through a few of these beads and then this side will be finished. And we'll crimp. These chevron beads are, have very, very tiny holes, so I think we're gonna skip that bead. Um, I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit. Actually, I don't really need to. That part didn't matter because I, I, the other side isn't finished. So uh, I'm going to take my crimp, crimping pliers, which are over here. I'm gonna flat crimp this because my crimp bead, uh, my crimp cover is very large and it's totally fine. This is very lightweight necklace okay I'm going to put on my crimp cover and you can use a smaller one you can use whatever you have don't have a crimp cover it's totally fine don't use the crimp cover <laughs> and just finagle that if you don't crimp it right away or correctly the right away it's totally fine to Use your pliers to move that around. Oops, sorry, not trying to make you seasick here. And um, then we'll just clip our wire. I'm gonna use my garden shears. My good <laughs> cutters are still downstairs. It's been like a week, I know. Okay. And then we will go to the other side of the necklace. So we'll scooch everything down. This side is finished. And I will cut a length a little bit longer than what I need. 
need to throw out these because they are finished. They are done. <laughs> they don't work anymore. And um, I don't think I have enough of these to go through the eye of the fish. I can try, but um, well, let's see. Let's see first before we kind of decide it's not gonna work. I'm gonna put on my, um, my crimp. Yeah, those, those pink cutters didn't cut that very well. There you go. Oh no, where'd the crimp go? Here he is. Okay, put on our crimp. And then we will put on our spacer. And then um, I'm going to put on some of these guys. Actually, I'm gonna put on one of these first. Like I said, I don't know if I have enough of these, and if not, I can just take them right off and use some seed beads. see if those actually I think they'll go through I'm just double checking yeah those will be fine and actually this doesn't need to be as uh, loose as this loop so that should actually be enough of our rose gold beads rose gold rose quartz beads and I'll put on one seed bead like we did on the other side I'm just gonna move this down. We wanna make sure that our necklace is loosey-goosey, remember, from all my other videos. We don't want it to be too tight when we're crimping. Um, I'm going to make sure that when we crimp, the um, fish is uh, still hooked, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> on the um, rose quartz beads. So let's see if we can make that happen. What I don't want to happen is it to be on just the wire. There we go. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so then we're going to flat crimp again. Oh, I wanna make sure that there's no wire showing. Which might not happen. I might need to grab um, another spacer bead for right there. That's okay. We can do it. Okay, so I decided to go with two um, seed beads at the top just so we can make sure that there's enough room for the wire. I'm trying to scooch it down as much as possible without leaving any gaps. There might be one or two, which is totally fine. And I just love how we made our own connection here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flat crimp. Okay, I'm gonna grab my last crimp cover. And I smushed it too much, but you guys get the idea. And I'll just kinda, it's malleable, it's easy to fix. There we go. And then I'll take my huge gardening shears <laughs> and cut off my extra wire. So here is our finished piece, which is one um, just long string of beads, but it's so elegant and it's so fresh and it's so fun. And um, it really puts on display this little teeny tiny fish and some beautiful rose quartz beads. So to close off our necklace, we're just gonna do that and that will hang um, hang down as, as far as you want it to. And it's not going to fall off because the end of the necklace is heavier than the light end of the necklace. So that's what makes it a lariat. I am super excited. I will take some better pictures of this necklace. Right now I don't have anything to hang it on, but um, 
I'll just do a slow pan for you. I think it's so cute and you can make this in an afternoon. It's not a super hard um, project. Um, I think it's pretty easy. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for Miss Goldie. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Hi, sweetie. I didn't mean to poke you in your eye. I'm so sorry. Aww. Hi, sweetie. You sleepy? Like always? Say hi, everybody. Aw, you're so cute, Goldie. Good night. <laughs>